Hello and welcome to the eighth lecture, Molecular Dynamics Ensembles. So we have been discussing the molecular dynamics theory. And uh, in the previous lecture, we have uh, introduced you to the concept of force fields. We have been actually uh, engaging in multiple lectures to explain the concept of force fields. And we have explained that in order to uh, define a system, you want to put it in terms of the potential energy of the system. And if you want to express the potential energy of a system uh, in a functional form, then you have to define so many terms. And uh, how you define those terms, it actually depends on your system. And sometimes you define force fields or interatomic potentials uh, by focusing on uh, atom to atom interaction. Sometimes you consider more things like uh, uh, the rho, the uh, electron gas density. Sometimes you uh, include more things like uh, bond order. Sometimes in other force fields like charm, you include so many terms like bond angles, dihedrals, and non-bonded interactions. So, but when we talk about these, we are actually talking uh, in the very atomic scale. But if you think about a molecular dynamic simulation, it's actually running an entire system and you want to get the uh, macro level properties by uh, running an atomistic level simulation. And when it comes to macro level properties, you have to actually define an ensemble. <clears throat> Just a flashback that we are actually solving uh, Newton's uh, equation to get the trajectories of atoms and there are underlying algorithms or ways to solve these kind of equations. And we have also introduced the concept of time step so as we are talking about uh, ensembles in this lecture, so far we know only about the atoms, the atomistic uh, scale or level of interaction. But in a system, there is not only two or three atoms that we can talk about. Uh, let's say there's a protein that's, that is solvated in a simulation box in a thousand of water molecules. So if you think about the holistic system, as I'm uh, showing here in these figures, in this simulation box, there are actually thousands of atoms. So when you consider their macroscopic state, you are actually solving microscopic or atomistic level of equations, but you are trying to get macroscopic state. And that's why you have to use some macroscopic level of conditions on the system. And collectively, these conditions are called ensembles. So what kind of ensembles can we actually apply on a system? There are generally three types. One is called microcanonical ensemble or NVE, in which N, V, and E of the system, that is the number of atoms, the volume of the system, and the total energy of the system is kept constant. Another one is a canonical ensemble where the NV and the temperature of the system is kept constant. And uh, the third one is isothermal isobaric ensemble where number of atoms, pressure, and temperature are kept constant. You can think about experimental constraints that are actually applied when you perform uh, an experiment in real life. That similar thing you are doing in simulation here at macroscopic state. So that's how ensembles work. It will be more clearer when we will talk about molecular dynamic simulation input script in detail. So uh, in the next lecture, we'll talk about another uh, thing uh, that comes in handy when you run molecular dynamic simulation that is periodic boundary conditions. Thanks.